So what do you think of the project? Well, honestly, um, I don't really get the TV cast and the diddles. Yeah, but you know, we have to do it because it's a project and we have to analyze two poems, uh, the TV cast and the diddles. It's hard. You know what? I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to go to sleep. Oh, I'm going to start then. Um, who are you, may I ask? I'm Sofia. Who are you? Um, well, this is my house. But okay, am I hallucinated again? Maybe, you know, like, it's the 70s, you know? Oh, but okay, um, what are you reading? Those are just my poems. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm reading one of your poems. What poem? Do you it's called Homework. Homework? Ah, uh, yeah, but I haven't shown it to anyone, you know? Uh, mm. Awkward! Okay, uh, that's okay, you know? It's because, you know, like my friends always tell me to stop doing that, but I, I keep hallucinating, you know? But it's, it's okay. Uh, do you like it? I uh, know you didn't like my form. Well, I did. I I'm just confused. What? Well, it's because we're analyzing the poem, and the teacher gave us a thing called diddles. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Oh yeah, yeah, good guy. To know. analyze it, but I don't really get it. Oh okay, but um, do you want to read the poem first? You know. Yeah, oh. look, look. Whoa, what the heck is this? It's called a cell phone. <laughs> cell phone. Okay. You know, like my cell phone that is like really big? Uh, oh. I don't get it. Uh, do you want me to read from this tiny little thing? Yes. Oh, um, like this? Uh huh. Okay. Uh, well. Okay, so homework. If I were doing my laundry, I'd wash my dirty iron. I'd thrown in my United States and pour on the ivory soap, scrub up Africa. Throw all the birds and elephants back in the jungle. I'd watch the Amazon River and clean the oily Carib and Gulf of Mexico. Rub the smoke of the North Pole, wipe up all the pipelines in Alaska. Rub a dub dub for Rocky Flats and Los Alamos. Flush the sparkly cesium out of Love Canal. Rinse down the acid rain over the Parthenon and Sphinx, drain sludge out of the Mediterranean basin and make it a shore again. Put some blowing back into the sky over the Rhine. Bleach the little clouds so snow return white as snow. Cleanse the Hudson, Thames and Necker. Drain the sods out of Lake Eric. Then I throw big Asia in one giant load and wash out the blood and Agent Orange. Dump the whole mess of Russia and shine in the ringer. Squeeze out the tile tag gray of US Central American police state. I put the planet in the dryer and let it sit 20 minutes or an anion till it came out clean. Yeah, that's what I wrote. Uh, I don't know how to. Oh, just... Okay. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, well, first of all, we need to start with diction, you know. Um, mm, do you know what diction is, man? Well, isn't it kind of like the word choice? Well, yeah, you know, like, why did the author chose that word over that word? Like, what is the motivation of the author? I don't know if you have a question about it for me. Um, yeah, like, why did you choose those words? Well, I don't know. Maybe, like, there's a lot of poets, you know, that are, like, really difficult, you know, like Shakespeare, you know, God bless him. But, um, I don't know, too difficult to understand, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. To be or not to be, too difficult, too difficult. So I put it like simple, ivory soap, rub a dub dub. <laughs> That's funny, right? <laughs> okay. Um, so let's continue. 
Um, it's because it's simple and I wanted people to understand and take action, no? What was your motivation for the poem? Well, you know, this is the 70s, we're in the sucking cold war. I hate it. You don't hate it? Yeah. Yeah, right. I don't know. I hate... I don't. I hate everyone, you know? But, well, I love them, but... Uh, okay. Uh, do next. What if we do imagery? Imagery, okay. You I, know, okay. I do get that one, because I know that it's like words that you choose but don't mean them in a literal way. Like when you put that wash out the acid rain. Yeah, you know, because I think like contamination nowadays is also a human factor. And imagery most likely is most like what did the author wants to like, wants the reader to imagine, like literally, what do you want? Like, what do you imagine when um, I'm like, when you're reading the poem? that you're actually doing those things yeah right so i want you to imagine not just like um the world like just the bay world i want you to imagine the amazon river i want you to imagine the sphinx i want you to imagine that everything the love canal everything i want you to imagine everything and i think i put a lot of imagery in my poem because I, uh, I believe that's the purpose of every poem you know mm -hmm. to make people imagine and Take you no know, reflection of all the things you know, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What else? Um, well, I can see that the details also like goes in hand with that because mm -hmm. you do use some words that help um, describe more into um, well, detail the the sentences. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, because I mean, well, in here, you, you, no, your teacher did a very good job, you know. But okay, in here it says like the oily carrot. You know what the Gulf of Mexico is. Yes, you know, there's a lot of oil there, right? The United States takes all over it because they want oil, so they spill the oil. They don't care. They don't give a damn. It's it's really, it's sad, you know? And also in here, the sparkly cesium out of love kennel. And it's, it's sparkly because, do you know cesium? Like, have you seen it? No, but I do know the story of the love canal. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They want to talk about it? Um, yeah, isn't it when, when, uh, like, this, the... The businesses started like dropping materials yeah. into the Niagara Falls in New York, mm -hmm. and and they went through a river. Yeah, it was really difficult, you know, because poor people like get uh, I don't know get washed in these things like and the Niagara Falls. That was, have you have you been there? No, I wish I had. No, it it's beautiful. really beautiful, you know, but the sparkly it looks. It's really I think it's a it's a little ironic, right? Because it's sparkly, it's like, you see something sparkly, you like it, mm -hmm. right? But in here, it's like the complete opposite. And also, in, I also said, like, big Asia. Have you seen the size of Asia? Yeah, I've seen it in maps. Oh my god, it's like, I don't know, it's really big, right? So I put the detail of big Asia and, like, put that whole mess into the washer machine because, I don't know, it's a mess. Everything is a mess in there, so I just wanted to detail that it just... A big mess needs to, like, get done right now. Yeah, yeah, totally. Okay, yeah, do so you want to say more about the detail, or...? Well, I think it's pretty clear, like, um, also, like, oh, yeah, why did you put tattletale? Like, tattletale? You know what that is? Yeah, like, when you say, like, like, when you tell on someone. Yeah, of course, and, you know, we're in the cold, cold war right now, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of spice like over Russia and everything. So they just don't, I don't know. They just, they're like little kids, like the, the United States, the government right now, they're just like little kids to say like, oh, Russia did that, um, Iran did that. And really, I don't get it. And that seems like it's a tattletale for me. Like they don't take responsibility for their own actions, you know? Mm -hmm. And that, that's why I wrote that detail. And the details, most like in here it says that it says like, what do they imply, you know? Detail in here, I imply that everything is just a whole mess that needs to get done. That's everything. Um, for the language, why mm -hmm. did you decide to make it so like colloquial? Colloquial, like, because I think this goes like really related to the diction mm -hmm. because, you know, like the, the word choice, because I think I made this point to the people or the people. You know, like, uh, I didn't want to be, like, separated from 
from the rest. I wanted people to understand. That's why I made it like really colloquial. Because when I was in school, I remember the poems of old English and oh my god, those are so difficult. Like really good poems, but I don't know, man. Really difficult. So I just decided to do it colloquial so everyone would understand it and make it like more fun, you know? A, a little of satire in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about like the polysyllabatic? Yeah, like, uh huh. It's because I didn't want. Well, there are also a lot of monosyllabic words in my in my poem, also because it's simple. But I think those, um, how do you say it, ah, polysyllabic words make it more reflexive, you know? So I wanted to make it colloquial, but not so that people think it's not important. I want to make a reflection. And I also see that you made it kind of connoted, it, like suggesting a, a meaning. Yeah, of course, because you cannot literally... Like, I would love that, but you cannot, like, literally put, like, the whole world into a washing machine. So, of course, you cannot take it literal. Mm -hmm. So, I think that's why I decided to do a narrative. And because it's, like, so simple to wash clothes, you know, and I think it's really simple to wash our planet, but I think it's going to take time. Yeah. Really take time, you know, so everyone can start to change. And then also for syntax, I mean, I do know that it's like the way the sentences are structured. Mm -hmm. um, I can see that you use a lot of like repetition with your I ideas. Well, yeah, of course, because I think, as I said before, you need to start with yourself. So I put like, I wash, I rub, I pour that thing. Because if you said you pour that thing, it's just like the US government, you know, you just put the whole responsibility another one and i don't know i think we should be like more lovable to ourselves and start being you know more responsible for our acts and also i see that there's a lot of parallelism with the ideas yeah of course because i want to like emphasize in the idea that everyone should just put the whole world in a washing machine and there and i like this because have you washed your clothes Yes. Yeah, of course, right? And there are like, there are ways of doing it. You can just put your clothes and like, uh, shoot a bottom, a bottom, and that, that's it, right? No, there are like steps. First of all, you separate your clothes, then you put them in the washing machine. So I think to change the world, there are also like steps. That's why it's like the same ideas. Mm -hmm. And what else? No. Um, I see that there's also long sentences. Well, yeah, of course, because long sentences, did you, did you don't see this in your English class? Because long sentences like imply more reflection. Mm -hmm. No, and I just think that this whole poem just makes everyone think more about the people. The people, all you need is love, you know? The Beatles love them. But, yeah. Um, oh, that, you have been really helpful. Thank you for helping me analyze this poem. Yeah, you know, uh, I don't know what happened here, you know? I don't know from what year you are, I think this is not real, but okay. Uh, you know, you don't want to drink something? Or... No, I'm, I'm good. Really? Yeah. Oh, well. Okay, so well, it was a pleasure. I need to start, like, I need to go for uh, some things, you know, to get relaxed and write another poem. Okay. But, um, well, it was a pleasure to meet you, Alan. And your services. I'm gonna write a lot, of, a lot of whole poems. I don't know if you're gonna see them in your English class, but if you do, just tell them that uh, like, I'm really cool. Okay, will do. Okay, thank you. Goodbye, Sophia. Goodbye, Alan. Every time you want to relax, you can go. But, um, there's door. Thank you. See you next time. Yeah, I'll captain my captain. <laughs> Oh, Captain, my Captain, our fearful trip is done. The ship has weathered every rock, the price we saw is won. The port is near, the bells I hear, the people all exulting. While follow eyes the steady keel, the vessel grim and daring. But oh, heart, 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 all the bleeding drops of red, where on the deck my Captain lies, falling cold and dead. Oh, Captain, my Captain, rise up and hear the bells. Raise up, for you the flag is flung, for you the buckle drills. 
for you buckets and river rails, for you the shores are crowding, for you they call the swaying mass, their eager faces turning. Here, Captain, dear father, this arm beneath your head, it is some dream that on you falling cold and dead. My captain does not answer, his lips are pale and still. My father does not feel my arm, he has no pulse nor will. The ship is anchored safe and sound, its voyage closed and done. From fearful trip the victor ship comes in with the object won. Exult, O shorts, and O rings, O bells. But I, with a mournful tread, walk the deck my captain lies, falling cold and dead. Uh, who are you? I'm Sophia, who are you? Um, Walt Whitman. So, what are you doing here? I don't know. I just... I'm not poor man, I don't have money. I'm not gonna rob you, I just came through the door. <laughs> okay, sorry. So, so what do you want to know about me? Or why are you here? What is the title of that poem? Oh, Captain, my Captain. I don't know if you're familiar with the Tipicast. Tipicast? No, what is that? Oh, well, it's really easy. I mean, I'm learning this in my English class, and it's just basically analyzing the poem by, like, parts of it. Like, with the title of your poem, like, what do you think the poem is going to be about? Uh, okay, so, so the, ver the, the title refers to, like, what do you think of the poem uh, before reading it? And we, in the title of my poem is, Oh, Captain, My Captain. So what, what do you think that is a title? Like, what does it imply to you or? Well, I think it's about someone that was a captain and that you're admiring him. Okay. Like, no, it's, that is not like the correct answer, but it's okay because it's like the title because you, you haven't read it, right? Yeah. So paraphrase would be like writing the poem over again with different words, right? So it'd be like, oh, captain, my captain, your life is over. We found what we were looking for. I hear the bells and the people making noise. The bleeding stops and my captain is on the deck, dead, dead and cold. Would it be something like that? Yeah, it would be something like that. But like, I, when I wrote it, I was very mournful because, you know, the captain died and... No, no, like it means... It have a, a deeper meaning than that. So is that part of the connotation? Yeah, that is part of the connotation. So do you know what, what that implies? Or? Well, the implied meaning, well, as you said, it's like, it's a poem that you're admiring somebody that's dead, right? Yeah, right. You're showing him respect. Yeah, sure. So um, you would use things like imagery and stuff like that? Yeah, for sure. Because I couldn't... Because I, I couldn't refer refer to the to the president Abraham Lincoln as Abraham Lincoln. That's why I said captain. So the captain is the president. Mm. And um, what was your attitude towards the the poem? Uh, my my attitude towards the poem was very mournful. But at the beginning, I I was very cheerful and enthusiastic because. I was very happy to return safe and sound from the trip, but then, but then, um, the, then after after that, after saying that, um, in the poem, I claimed that that the captain died, and that makes me so sad that I cannot even talk about. Um, what about the shift? Sorry, sorry. Uh, the the poem has a shift, uh, a very uh, clear shift because at the beginning, uh, my tone is because I, my tone is uh, like of happiness, of of uh, of celebration, but there is a mercurial shift because because I as I mentioned earlier, then then I'm talking about my about my captain and, and and that is that he's very very that that he's dead you know um so now that we know the poem like 
So the title is about like a morning poem. Yeah, sure. Yeah, like I expressed my relief of of coming home safe, but but at the same time I'm very sad because the captain died. And so, do you know more about the connotations that I used, like the ship and I don't know the ocean that that I used in my poem? Yeah, well, that was part of imagery. Yeah, sure. Like the ship really meant the the Vietnam War, and the captain. The, the captain is the president, as I said. And you know, like, like that shift means like how the people is feeling right so now. So also they like symbolism. Yeah, also symbolism a lot of it. Mm -hmm. um, for like the last yeah. part, what do you think the theme of the, of her poem is? So the theme is the ele the elegy to the captain's death. That's the principal theme. And I cannot even talk about it because that makes me so mournful. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry for bothering you. Um, thank you for helping me analyze your poem. I, no, better, no. Get, I better get going. No, it's okay. Thank you very much. This is very hard. I don't get it. The figurative language. Okay, the title. Hey, Sophie, what do you think about the title? Sophie? Huh? Oh my god, I just had the weirdest dream. What is that? What is that? I had a dream that I traveled back in time to the authors of these poems and they gave me the answers to the. Are you kidding? I'm not kidding. Look, now we can do it. I know every answer for this. How? I cannot believe it. Um, like you just fell, fell asleep and then you wake up and you know everything about the project or like how? Yes. I finally 